Now, several major British institutions and companies have apologized for their involvement with slavery. The Church of England says its links to the slave trade in the 18th and 19th century were a source of shame. New analysis by University College London found nearly 100 clergymen benefited. Ten former governors and directors of the Bank of England have also been named in that report. The bank called the trade an unacceptable part of British history and vowed not to display images of the senior figures involved. Insurance giant Lloyds of London and pub chain Green King also made similar pledges. The firms say they'll fund projects to provide opportunities for minorities. But a regional alliance of Caribbean countries says apologies are not enough. It's calling on British institutions as well as other former colonial powers to pay for development in the Caribbean. Well, now let's bring in Hilary Beckles from Kingston in Jamaica. He's the chairman of the Caribbean Community Reparations Commission. So, Beckles, thank you so much for joining us today. Let me start by asking you how you feel about this apology. Well, first of all, I would, I would say that um, uh, this is a process that has been uh, evolving uh, gradually but is, is now gaining uh, momentum in this 21st century, which uh, we had, in a sense, predicted it would, given the, the logic within uh, the world in respect of how to treat historical crimes, uh, slavery, through to this 21st century moment. Mm -hmm. So, uh, in a sense, it's, it, is, it is really consistent with an evolving sense of, of consciousness about the crimes that were committed uh, in the era of colonial empire building. I know that you've been pushing for reparations. Talk me through the kinds of reparations you'd like to see and how you think they could realistically be rolled out. Well, again, let us historicize for just a moment. Um, you know, these crimes that were committed, slavery, uh, native genocide, uh, the globalization of African slavery, all of these were processes that helped to build the modern Western world. The entire Atlantic industrial culture on both sides, uh, the American side, the European side, uh, built upon these crimes. And it, it took all of the, the 19th century to, to, up, to uproot chattel slavery in, uh, in the Western world. It took 100 years, legislation, country by country, to, to eradicate slavery. Then it took us all of the 20th century to bring civil rights and human rights and legislation uh, to the black people across the Atlantic world. Another mm. 100 years to get those human rights and civil rights recognized. Mm. And now we're faced with the 21st century and the, the inescapable, inexorable logic in all of this is that this is the moment of reparatory justice uh, for the victims and their descendants. So this is the time. And this 21st century is going to be the century of reparations. In fact, it is quite clear that already it is shaping up to establish that reparatory justice for all of these crimes that have, have been committed will be the greatest political movement of the 21st century. Sure. What we're looking for is development. We're looking for development. We're saying that all of the, the damage that has been done to the African peoples and their descendants, uh, the empires have collapsed and have left them in poverty, uh, have left them in, in destitution. Uh, across the Caribbean, what we see is the legacy of European colonization, uh, the poverty, the, the, the slum existent, the public ill health, uh, very poor infrastructure. The European countries haven't extracted wealth uh, through the slavery, using the Caribbean as a core, have walked away and have left the region in dire straits. So what reparations is calling for is a development model a strategy yeah. that says you must come back to the site of the crimes and you must assist the citizens and their governments in cleaning up the mess that you have left behind that continues to, to de de debilitate and harm mm. the descendants of these societies. Well, this all clearly goes beyond apologies and, and beyond money, but is, is about trying to build racial cohesion in the societies that we live in now. What would you say to those arguing that holding on to historical grievances really can create more division today? The consequences and the legacies of slavery and colonization are debilitating uh, all around us in these societies that were built upon this foundation. You, you made reference, for example, to uh, the, the Bank of England. The Bank of England was established in 1694 to, to regulate all of the cash 
that was flowing into Britain as a result of the slave trade. And it was thought necessary to coordinate a, a national banking system. This was put in place because of the tremendous wealth from the slave trade that was poured into the country. Church of England participated in all of this. Um, mm -hmm. I am from the island of Barbados, and I uh, grew up in the neighborhood not very far away from the Codrington plantations. The Codrington plantations were owned by the Church of England. Uh, mm -hmm. Hundreds of slaves were owned by the Church of England. The slaves were branded on their shoulder with the letters C of E, Church of England. And the Church of England was one of the major owners of enslaved peoples. And the profits out of the plantations and the slave plantations owned by the Church of England, those profits were sent back to the bishops of London, and they used that cash to build churches, provincial churches, all over England. Then, of course, Lloyds of London. Slavery and the slave trade could not have continued for two to three hundred years without a very sophisticated banking system, a sophisticated yeah. system of insurance. It could not have gone on without Lloyds of London. They were the financial brains and the financial infrastructure that en enabled all of this to happen, and they did very well financially. Yeah. So these institutions, they do need to come back to the site of their enrichment mm -hmm. and participate in the legacy. This is not unreasonable. This is moral. This is just. And this is the kind of standard management thinking that one would expect in this in this 21st century. To, to issue statements of mm -hmm. regret and apology from a distance as a public relations exercise, as an exercise in uh, public spectacles, unacceptable and absolutely rejected by the people in the Caribbean. What we're asking for is dialogue, negotiation, mm -hmm. and the participation in a system of economic development that will help these societies to move forward. Hilary Beckles there, the chairman of the Caribbean Community Reparations Commission. Thank you for joining us, sir, on Al Jazeera. You're most welcome.